Good morning. God bless you. And thank you for joining us this morning. Amen. For our Imani Temple Sunday School this morning. Amen. Power for living. Amen. And I will be your facilitator this morning, Elder Dwayne Solomon. I'm an assistant pastor here at Imani Temple. And our spring quarter topic uh, of 2022 2023 is Jesus Calls Us. The month of March topic is called from the margins of society. And today's subject, which I am excited about, is Jesus overpowers legion. Our scriptures that we will be dealing with this morning or, or reading and uh, praying for understanding is from Mark chapter 5 verses 1 through 13. And then we'll jump over to verses 18 through 20. Our key text this morning is, He departed and began to publish in Decapolis how great things Jesus had done for him, and all men did marvel. And that comes from Mark chapter 5, verses 20. Our lesson aim this morning is to list some key elements in Jesus' encounter with the dem demonic uh, number two, to explain the Masonic secret and how the story breaks with this theme in Mark's gospel. And three, share testimony about Jesus' intervention in our life. Our uh, thought to remember this morning is Jesus has the power. Come on, say that with me. Jesus has the power. Will you cry out to him? Hallelujah. Glory to God. I could, I could just work that right there by itself. Let us uh, begin by reading our passage of scripture this morning. Amen. Ah, that's a, that's a thought. That's a thought to hold on to right there. Jesus has the power. Will you cry out to him? And you can ask yourself that question. You can find you a mirror. I know I did. Found, I found me a mirror and I said, Jesus has the power. Sometimes you got to tell yourself that because you're dealing with so much in your life. You're dealing with ups and downs, ins and outs, and sometimes you have to look yourself in the mirror and remind yourself that Jesus has the power. <laughs> Will you cry out to him? And, and you might find yourself crying out to every and anything which we're going to deal with this morning. Amen. I'm excited about this lesson. If you would please turn with me to Mark chapter 5 verses. Uh, we want to begin reading here again. Um, Mark chapter 5 and I'll begin reading at verse 1. And uh, we're going to go verse 1 through 13. And then again we're going to jump over to verses 18 through 20. And the scripture reads, And they came over unto the other side of the sea, into the country of Gadarenes. And when he was come out of the ship, immediately there met him out of the tombs a man with an unclean spirit, who had his dwelling among the tombs. And no man could bind him, no, not with chains, but because that he had been often bound with feathers and chains, and the chains had been plucked asunder by him, and the fetters 
broken in pieces. Neither could any man tame him. Look at that. Any man could, no, nobody could tame him. And always, night and day, he was in mountains and in the tombs, crying and cutting himself with, with stones. But when he saw Jesus afar off, he ran and worshipped him and cried out with a loud voice and said, What have I to do with thee, Jesus, the Son of the Most High God? I adjure, I adjure thee by God that thou torment me not. For he said unto him, Come out of the man, thou unclean spirit. And he asked him, What is thy name? And he answered, saying, My name is Legion, for we are many. And verse 10, And he besought him much that he would not send him away out of the country. Now there was there nigh unto him the mountains a great herd of swine feeding. And all the devils besought him, saying, Look at that, and all the devils besought him, saying, Send us into the swine that we may enter into them. And forthwith Jesus gave them leave. And the unclean spirits went out and entered into the swine. And the herd ran violently down a steep place into the sea. They were about 2,000 and were choked in the sea. Verse 18. And when he was come into the ship, he that had been possessed with the devil prayed, him that he might be with him. Howbeit Jesus suffered him not, but saith unto him, Go home to thy friends, and tell them how great things the Lord hath done for thee, and thou hath had compassion on thee. And he departed, and began to publish in Decapolis how great things Jesus had done for him, and all men did marvel. May the Lord have a blessing to the reading and hearing of his holy word. Before I go into the lesson, let's breathe a word, a word of prayer over what we have uh, read this morning and going into. Father God in heaven, we come this morning, O oh God, as ambassadors of Christ, O oh God. Lord God, you know and you see the demons, O oh God, that we're dealing with, O oh God. You know the access points that there are there in our lives, O oh God. We pray now, Father God, in the name of Jesus, that you cover us, Father God, with the blood of Jesus, Father God. Cover us, O oh God. Cover us, O oh God. Cover our families. Cover our friends, O oh God. Cover our church family, oh God. Cover us, oh God. Cover our enemies, oh God, that we may not be infiltrated by no demon or devil from the pits of hell, oh God. And any demon or devil, oh God, that may have attached itself to us, oh God, we ask this morning, Father, in the name of Jesus, oh God, that you would purge us of it this morning. We take authority this morning, oh God, over the devil this morning, oh God, in the name of Jesus, oh God, power of a living God, fall fresh this morning, oh God, over this Sunday school, oh God, fall fresh this morning, oh God, oh God, fall fresh this morning, oh God, purge us this morning, oh God, of any demon or devil, oh God, that's attempting, oh God, to overtake our minds, oh God, to overtake our thinking, oh God. God, through emotions, oh God, through fear, oh God, through discouragement, oh God, we bind this morning every effort of the enemy, oh God, to cause separation and division in the name of Jesus, oh God. Now, God, let the power, hey God, of your word this morning, oh God, the living power of the word this morning, oh God, help it take us, oh God, Father, oh God, into the understanding and the wisdom of the word in in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank God this morning for the word this morning. Amen. And we want to just go ahead and jump right into this because there is a little background, amen, that we must 
uh, discuss this morning concerning this. Before we even get to Mark chapter 5, we got to understand the boat in which Jesus was coming off of. Jesus was coming off of a storm, amen. In Mark chapter 4, we read that they were caught up in a storm. Jesus was in the boat sleeping, but the disciples, amen, they were worried. They were feared of the storm before the boat was being tossed to and fro, amen. The boat was being shaken, amen. It, it felt like it was about to fall apart. And the disciples were overtaken by fear, amen, to the point that they woke Jesus up. And after they woke Jesus up, he spoke to the storm, amen. He said, peace be still, amen. And he spoke to the storm, amen. And some of us, we need Jesus to speak to our storm, amen. Hallelujah, glory to God. There are some storms that Jesus have already empowered you. I'm going somewhere with this. Or have empowered you to speak to. But here in this instance, here Jesus, we, we're going to see, amen, that this storm was preparatory. It was preparatory. What they were dealing with on the boat at that time was preparatory for what they were going to deal with when they got to the Gadareans. Amen. And so here he spoke to the storm and said, peace be still. And after the storm calmed down, he spoke to the disciples and he said, oh, ye of little faith. We got to have faith, brothers and sisters. And, and, and we go in, in this life that we're living for Jesus Christ, it requires faith. Amen. It's a faith walk. Amen. And so here he, he called, he spoke to them. He said, oh, ye of little faith, which tells us that the disciples had the same power that Jesus had to speak to the storm. But they didn't utilize the power. Amen. And, but Jesus, after they awoke him, he showed them all they had to do is speak to the storm. Amen. And, and so that exousia power, the authoritative power of God, we have. Amen. And we can speak. Amen. Thank God for Luke, ch Luke chapter 10, verse 19, where Jesus told us that we could tread upon serpents, that we had authority over the devil, over demons, amen, that we could cast them back to the pits of hell from which where they came from. And so this morning, as we, before we get into the, in, uh, the depth of this, this uh, scripture, uh, this passage of lesson here, I want to talk to you this morning about that, that we, uh, a lot of people do their best. We, we fear when this, this subject come up concerning demons. We get shake, we get shook. That's what the young people go. We get shook when, 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 when uh, we're dealing when this subject comes up, dealing with demons. Why do we get shook? Why, why does it seem like we get uh, scared? We get scared. We get, we get, we have fear when it comes to dealing with demons because one thing is we don't know how. So a lot of us, if you never had to deal with a demon, you don't know how to deal with a demon. So we try to flee. From a demon, and, and 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 we try to do our best to avoid demons. Well, let me share with you this morning that you cannot avoid a demon. You can run, but that demon is going to find you. That demon is going to stay on your trail. The only way to deal with a demon is to confront it. Amen. And you must confront it in the name of Jesus. Amen. You 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 have to confront it with giving giving uh, the 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 fight over. To Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. Amen. Uh, avoiding demons don't make them go away. Amen. And it doesn't, uh, it doesn't, uh, the demons don't leave you alone. They will come back. They may disappear for a moment, but they will come back. Amen. And, and so here, the, this morning, I need to, the, before we get in deep into the lesson, there are some things that the Lord gave me in the spirit while I was going through this uh uh, reading and studying this lesson that we have access points in our life that we have to ensure that we pray over and that we seek God for. Amen. And, 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 and because the first question comes to mind when you begin to read this lesson is how did this happen to this man? What was what, what happened to put this man in this situation that he was overtaken by a demon? And, and so there, there are in, in the world, there's a transfer 
of spirits, amen. And 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 so these transfer of spirits happened in a in a, a lot of different ways. And I just want to talk to you this morning about five different ways that this transfer of, of, of spirits, because we don't just we, this this just just happen, amen. But there are some things that we can do as 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 believers in Christ to ensure that this doesn't happen, amen. The first thing, the first transfer of spirit is embryonic, and embryonic, amen, or, or, or born with it, amen, a physical transfer, amen, where, where, where a lot of people are de dealing with stuff from their parents, amen, that their parents didn't deal with because their parents didn't deal with it. So it, it just filtered down, amen. We see a lot of babies that are being born on drugs, amen. This, this is a, this is a, this is, this is not, the baby didn't start taking drugs. It was, it came from the parents. And because they didn't deal with it, amen, we have a, a physical transfer of an evil and wicked spirit, amen. The second thing here is an environmental transfer, amen. This environmental transfer, I, 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 I want to deal with this, amen, because this environmental transfer is who you surround yourself with. Amen. This is this is this is who you attach yourself to, who your circle of friends are. Amen. I like to call it a demonic encroachment. For those of you that are taking notes, a demonic encroachment. Amen. It is 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 demons are contagious. Amen. Demons are contagious. And and so if you surround yourself with the wrong people, do you begin to take on those Demons, amen. You begin to take on the ways of those demons. Before you know it, those demons from your friends, from you even got to cut off some relatives, amen. It's, you know, it's environmental, amen. And, and we know how different things cause the environment to erode. So we don't put it in our environment because it caused our environment to erode. Well, it's the same way spiritually. If you surround yourself with things that will erode, amen. I don't care how much grandma prayed for you, grandpa prayed for you. I don't care how much they done laid hands. They could have dumped a truck of oil on you and everything else. If you continue to surround yourself or stay in the company of these that are dealing with demons and evil spirits, you will become. They will overtake you. And before you know it, your, your character, your personality will erode. They will take you down. And we see a lot of our brothers and sisters that are locked up right now in prison, not because of what they did, it was who they surrounded themselves with. Amen. Guilty by association. Amen. So it eroded. They, they had this impeccable uh, 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 character. They had this impeccable record after they graduated high school. And then they surrounded themselves. Amen. After they got to college with the wrong people. And, and you see it. You see them eroding day after day. Day after day. Becoming worse. 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 And it'll go from physical to uh, mental. Then you see them start getting emotional, and then you see the 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 the, the physical part of it. You you begin to see it. Uh, what is taking place on the inside begin to reflect on the outside, and you be, they've been dealing with this and they've been masking it a long time, amen. And and before you know it, it starts festering through the skin, and you can see, man, they don't look right. Something ain't right with them. They're looking sick right now. It is bothering, something bothering them. And so it, it, it manifests itself to the physical aspect of the person. And, and then it becomes emotional, amen, to the point where they'll lash out for no reason, amen. And so we have to be cognizant that these the transfer of spirits can happen in broad, in broad, in broad, embryonic, environmental. The next one, number three, is experimental transfer of spirits. Experiment. I, I just want to try this. 
I, I just want to get a taste of this. I just want to, I done heard him talk about this so much, I got to try this just one time. See how this goes, you know. See, see what this, just try a little bit of this. I'm just going to do it this one time and that's it. I just want to see what that feeling they talking about, how that impacts me, what that does for me, amen. And so this, these spirits, they will transfer by, by experimenting. Amen. And this is for not only for young people, this is for adults as well. Adults will experiment. Amen. A lot of times we start talking about experimenting. You think we, we, we talking directly to the young adults, the young people, the teenagers, the, you know, with the babies. No, 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 no. Adults will go out and experiment. And, and, and they, when they experiment, they get caught up. And, and when they get caught up, it leads to other things, you see, and, and I'm going to talk about these other things because we're not just dealing with one spirit, amen. All it takes is to experiment with one thing and you will open the door for legions to come into your life. Okay, so we discuss embry embryonic, environmental transfer of spirit, exper experimental transfer of spirits. The, the fourth one is an emotional transfer of spirits. Amen. Emotional transfer of spirits. When a person becomes uh, tired, anger, exhausted, bitter, uh, it, it, the devil will manipulate your spirit at that time. When you, you become frustrated, the devil will manipulate your spirit and what the devil is trying to do is to get into your emotions to cause a commotion. Amen. And if the devil can get in your emotions and cause a commotion, amen, it's not you responding, amen, intelligently or out, out again, not responding out of the word of God, but you're responding out of your emotions because you're tired. Because you didn't take the time to get enough rest. Because you took this thing to bed. And you slept with it. Amen. I, I, I'm not telling you what I heard. I'm telling you what I know. If you take these problems, these enemies will try to infiltrate your emotions. That you will take it to bed. And you will sleep with it. Amen. You will sleep with it. And while you're sleeping with it, it's embedding itself inside of you and it is telling you all kind of it'll tell you that you're right it'll tell you that yeah you need to take control of this because if you don't take control of this nobody can't handle it like you it, it'll have you fooling yourself amen this is and, and what does this come from it's when the devil attempts to wear us down saints it begins to wear us down as believers it wants us to become exhausted where we will settle for anything We'll just settle because we're tired. And we'll say, yeah, we, we, that's good. That's good. We'll take that. We, we don't do our due diligence. We're not allowing the, the, the discernment that God has blessed us with, the gift of discernment, amen. We're not discerning it because we've allowed physical emotions to overtake us. And now we are, uh, are dealing with situations from an, an exhausted spirit where the devil has infiltrated and we're not doing what God has called us to do. We're just saying, yeah, it's okay. Let's go along with this. Let's do this. And, and the devil will infiltrate your emotions, amen, and, and cause a commotion, amen. And it's through this commotion, you see, again, like I said earlier, the, he's just looking for an access point. Amen. And at this access point, you ain't going to have to deal with just an emotional devil. You're dealing with legions. Of devil, he's not coming by himself, amen. He's bringing legions of devils to deal with him, and and so in dealing with this, we have to get the right amount of rest, amen. We cannot take this stuff to bed. We have to pray about it and seek God for peace, amen. We have to fill our mind, our heart, our spirit with the scriptures of God. I'm not telling you what I heard. I'm telling you what I dealt with, amen. And it's, and it's through the spirits that, that you read the scripture, amen, that will remind you that the battle does not belong to you, but that it belongs to God, amen. That you release, you release it. You release it. God said, vengeance is mine. You ain't fighting nothing. You can't fight this devil. 
you got to turn it over to God. And when you release it and turn it over to God, I, I, can I share with you? That's all it took for me. God, I turn this over to you. And I slept like a baby. Best slept I had in my life. I slept like a baby because I released it to God. Before I prayed, I read the scripture. I read every scripture that I could find at that, at that moment that, that, could, that, would, that would bring peace into my life. That would remind me that the fight didn't belong to me. The problem, this, this devil wasn't after me. He was after the Christ in me. That, that's who he was after. Amen. But if I had allowed an access point, if I had allowed myself to lie down with that, I would have woke up the next morning with no patience, no peace. And, and see, when you sleep with this thing, it'll cause you to turn on the one that you're physically sleeping with. Yeah. It'll cause you to turn on your family. It'll cause you to turn on your friends. It'll cause you to turn on the ones that's trying to help you. It'll, it'll cause you to turn on yourself, mm. which we're going to see here in a moment. I'm moving kind of fast, but it's with, it's with, uh, it's, it's, it's with reason. Um, the fifth, fifth and last one that I want to talk about, that the transfer of spirits comes through conversation. My law. Conversational transfer of spirits. We talk too much. Too much gossiping. And not enough praying. We, we've heard our pastor say it time after time. Don't talk about it. Pray about it. Amen. And, and if the more we talk about it, what you're doing is you're sowing that spirit that's deal, that you're dealing with. You're sowing it into somebody else's spirit. Amen. You, 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 you're transferring. There's a transfer of, of spirit. Amen. Because the devil done tricked your mind with a, a way of thinking. Now you're transferring that to somebody else. Amen. So you got to be able, as a believer in Christ, to know how to turn off certain conversations that's not building, that's not upbuilding, that's not fulfilling, that's not going to help you. Amen. If you if you realize that's where our discernment come back in. You got to discern these conversations. If the conversation sounds like, oh, we about to start gossiping, you better know how to turn that thing off and walk away from it. Get away fast from it. Because if you don't, it will it will there will be a transfer of spirits inside your heart and your mind. And before you know it, these spirits will overtake you. So the lesson and the scripture doesn't tell us how this man, uh, how he became overtaken by this demon. But it tells us that he was dealing with the demon. Amen. And, and so as we read this, amen, I'm going to go through this pretty quick, so stay with me. And as we read this, uh, they came into the land of gatherings, amen. Um, um, and here in Mark, we see that this, this, uh, this place, they, they, the region was broadly, it was called the capitalist, amen, meaning ten cities, amen. Um, and this was, they, they don't really pinpoint exactly where in gatherings that, that they had landed, but we understand that Jesus was on the way there with, with, uh, on assignment, amen, for the preaching and teaching of the word of God, amen. So we, we, uh, which brings us to this first point that, um, there were times there where Jesus would tell people, don't say nothing after he performed a miracle. And, and it's considered the, the Masonic, amen, um, the Masonic secret, amen. The, 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 the secret there was that he didn't, he was on assignment. So he didn't want a bunch of people uh, gathering around him because the purpose of him being in these different places was not to put on a show of healing and, 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 and uh, miracles and things like that. It was the preaching and teaching of the word. And so, thank you. So we find here that what Jesus was dealing with here was more than, than just the people, amen. He understood that the, the more people came, that, that, that they were coming not to receive the word, but they were coming to see a show. A lot of people are going to these, these big churches and, and things to see a show. They come in to see the lights. They come in to see the smoke. They come in to see what... What uh, what word this pastor 
uh, this person can say to stir up people, amen. And, and, and so they come to be uh, emotionally entertained, if you will. That's what they're going for. They're not going to receive the substance of the word. They're going to be emotionally entertained. Amen. And we have to be careful because there's a transfer of spirits that's happening in that environment. Amen. Where you're, where you're being emotionally entertained. Amen. Nobody don't want to be emotionally challenged. Amen. But we do want to be emotionally Entertained, amen. They don't want to be spiritually challenged, amen. You don't want the pastor to call out something that you're dealing with. You begin, you you get uneasy. You you start moving around in your chair. Wait a minute now. Come on, come on, Pastor Mason. You you going somewhere here with this? Nobody want to deal with that. When God has called us to deal with that exactly, because what happens is He may be dealing with an access point that 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 will. That you need to deal with because the shutting down of that access point will uh, uh, will close the door on spirits being transferred into you. Mm. Amen. Ah, my God. So here we see that that um, th even with this Masonic secret here, many theories have been proposed for this. Okay, uh, many theories. While people were looking for a political messiah to deliver them from the Roman imperialism, Jesus used the time of secrecy to teach about the larger role of the messiah, which is beyond Israel and its political realm. Jesus wanted, he, he wanted the ministry to be defined as preaching and teaching. Okay, he wanted it to be defined as a preaching and teaching ministry more than a healing and miracle show, amen, ministry. Um, so here we find in verse 1 here that he said they overcame and they over and they came over under the other side of the sea into the country of the Gadarenes, amen. Verse 2, and when and when he was come out of the ship immediately. Immediately there met him out of the tombs was a man with an unclean spirit who had dwelled, look at this, dwelling among the tombs. Now this man that was dwelling among the tombs here, let's, let's make this clear. He, he, uh, Jesus came out of the ship. Amen. This was, this was not, this, it was nothing fancy about this. He came out of the ship. What was interesting about this, that when he came out of the ship, the demon ran up on him. It says immediately, amen, immediately there met him out of the tomb was a man with an unclean spirit, amen, which, which let Jesus know he was at the right place mm -hmm. at the right time. Don't run from situations. Don't run from circumstances. Because when, when, when things look like they're, they're hardest, is this is preparation for what was to come. The storm that they dealt with in Mark chapter 4 was preparation for the storm that they were going to deal with. The storm on the sea was preparation for the storm on the land. Amen. So this man ran up un with unclean spirits, ran up on him. Amen. When he ran up on him, Jesus dealt with him right where he was. Amen. And, and so he, he, uh, he, he, Jesus spoke to this man. And he, he uh, and, 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 and notice how the scripture goes to great length. Amen. Um, defining what this man was. He was a man with an unclean spirit. Amen. It wasn't a man that was messed up. It was a man with an unclean spirit. You understand what I'm saying? So when they hear, when we look at verse 3 and verse 4 here, that uh, when they said, and no man could bind him, no, not with chains, because he he had been often bound with fetters, that a binding mechanism, and chains, and the chains had been plucked asunder by him, and the fetters were broken into pieces, neither could any man tame him. It wasn't, they were trying to lock him down Physically, but the problem, the, the power that was dealing with, they were dealing with the physical, but the problem was a spiritual problem. He had an unclean spirit, and so they couldn't lock down the unclean spirit, so they couldn't tame him. They couldn't control him. The chains were plucked. They were broken because this man had been overtaken 
by an unclean spirit. And so here we find that even um, once this possessed man lost control of himself, his community tried to stop him. Amen. They tried to stop him. And so the same way, amen, we, we see, let me, let me uh, put a little uh, uh, application on this. We got, we, 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 now I'm careful to say we deal with ourselves, we deal with other people that, that are dealing with unclean spirits. And, and so these unclean spirits will, will allow them, we try to put devices in place, rules and laws in place, and there's no control. Because those rules and laws are gauged to cause, towards controlling the physical man, but not the spiritual man. In the spiritual man, the control comes from Jesus in the word. Amen. The word will control that spiritual unclean spirit. Amen. That unclean spirit is the word. Amen. So here we find that, that even when they did their best, the community who had acknowledged that this man was dangerous, he was, they, they, they looked at him as an undomesticated beast. That's how wild he was. And, and, and he was going up and down the mountain, amen, in and out the tombs, amen. Notice how this man dwelt in the tombs, amen. He was in a place where everybody was dead. <laughs> he was in a place where everybody was dead. El Washington, dead people can't do nothing for you. That's why the spirits wanted to stay in the mountains, in the tombs. They wanted to stay close to the tombs because nobody there could do nothing for them. Nobody could pray about it. Nobody could seek God about it. So they wanted to stay among the dead. Be careful. Again, uh, think about those transfer spirits. Every last one of them line up with that. With, with people, when you environmentally, they, they want to keep you in a dormant place. In a slowful place where you won't you won't become active in the word of God. Think about the experimental person, the transfer spirit. Experimentally, they want to keep you drug, overdose, so you can't remember who God created you to be. Amen. In in the emotional spirit, they want to keep you bitter, anger, and upset. Amen. Why? Because it distracts you from the purpose and the plan of God in your life. They want to keep you exhausted. The devil wants you to be exhausted. Amen. Because if he can keep you tired, you're always irritated. Amen. If, if you refresh, you get a lot of sleep. And, 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 and the word of God, the freshness of the purpose and plan of God. Amen. You Jeremiah 29 and 11 becomes alive in you. Amen. That you remember that God has a plan for you, amen, a plan to prosper, amen, amen, a plan, amen, with a hope, a future, and an expected it. God has a plan for you, but if you exhausted, you tired, you angry, you bitter, you trying to have your way, you can't see that. You, you selfishness creep in, you know, because it looks like I'm always having to do this. I'm always having to do that. I'm the only one doing this. I'm the only. That's what happened. Selfish. Self is self-inflicted, self-inflicted, which leads us to this other part of this. This man was cutting himself, self-inflicted wounds. He was cutting himself. He, why was he cutting himself? I, I did a, a real good study. A lot of a lot of scholars, uh, theologians, had had tend to engage the thought that he was cutting himself to release what was inside of him. He was trying to cut himself, self-inflicted wounds. A lot of, uh, uh, of them thought and felt that this man was trying to harm himself. He was trying to kill himself because he couldn't control himself no more. He was, he was trying to kill himself. Now, what leads me to say this is that this man was cognizant, even though he was overtaken by a clean spirit. Hear me out. I'm going somewhere with this. Pay attention. Even though he was overtaken by a clean, unclean spirit, he still was aware of what was going on in his surroundings. He couldn't control it, but he was aware. Which is why when we find that when this man saw Jesus step off the boat, he ran to him and worshipped him. Don't, don't think the devil went to worship Jesus. This man ran to Jesus for help. And when he got to Jesus, notice how the unclean spirit 
inside of him overtook him and began to engage in conversation with Jesus. Amen. Begin to, to, to question Jesus. Why are you here for? <laughs> you come to torment me. You come to mess with me. So let me not lose sight. And, and uh, so here we see in uh, moving right along to verse five here. And always night and day, he was in the mountains, in the tombs, like I said, crying and cutting himself with stones. And, 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 and so he was here. He was he was uh, dealing with this demon that was inside of him, his unclean spirit that was inside of him here. And, and, and he was trying to do the best that, that this, this, the best that he could to run to Jesus, worship Jesus, and get deliverance from this spirit. Amen. But the spirit overtook him when he got to Jesus. And, and let's look at verse 6 here. Um, verse 6 through 7 here. It says, but when he saw Jesus afar off, he ran and worshipped him and cried out with a loud voice and said, what have I to do with thee, Jesus Thou son of son of the most high God. The devil acknowledged who he was, his deity, his authority. He acknowledged who he was right there. This was a confrontation. Amen. So, so we see that this, this devil was dealing with this, this, uh, this in, inside this unclean, uh, this man with an unclean spirit. The devil was using him as a puppet. That's all he was. And, and what, what did he do? He went to meet Jesus. And we're going to see there was, a, there was a subtle side of this conversation where the devil thought he could trick Jesus. And I'm going to point it out to you here in a moment. But look at this. If the devil went as, as the man went to worship him to try to get uh, deliverance from it. The devil himself started engaging in conversation with him. Uh, 7B uh, here through 8 says, I adjure thee by God that thou torment me not. For he said unto him, come out of the man, thou unclean spirit. Amen. The, not only, so this confrontation was, Jesus saw the need of the man, the devil, the unclean spirit here, saw that 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 Jesus was going to respond to the need of this man which came through the worship. Amen. That he was going to deliver him of this unclean. So this unclean spirit knew Jesus was about to cast him out. Amen. It's not clear how effective the unclean spirit it, uh, spirit's begging was here. You see, he began to beg of him. I adjure thee, Jesus. I, I adjure thee. I ask of you. Not to, not to send us back to the pits of hell, but cast us. We're going to see this here. And, 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 um, but to, to, not to send us back to the pits of hell. And in that same, look at that. In that same passage of scripture, Jesus said, for he said unto him, come out of the, come out of the man, thou unclean spirit. Verse 9, it says, and he asked him, what is thy name? And he answered him, saying, My name is Legion. Now we understand Legion ordinarily refers to a, a Roman military uh, um, unit consisting of approximately 6,000 soldiers, foot soldiers, as a matter of fact. Um, and, and so here we find that, that this wasn't just one demon that was, this man was possessed with, but he was possessed with a, de a legion of demons. Amen. A legion of demons. And dealing with a legion of demons here, that there was more going on than just this, this, this conversation or confrontation that Jesus was having. It wasn't with just one demon. It was with multiple demons. You see, they were, they were playing tricks in the conversation. Uh, verse 10 here, and he besought him, and he besought him much that he would not send them away out of the country. So look at the, the, the conversation that the confrontation that was happening between devil and the, the devil and uh and Jesus here. The devil was trying to manipulate the conversation that Jesus would, as we're gonna find out, send them into some swine, but not out of the country. Why? Because they knew that these people 
was of little faith. Remember, at this, this the, the teaching of the swine, that there was swine in the country, meaning that this was a Gentile settlement. Amen. And the Gentile, that was the Gentiles, was the reason for Jesus going to gatherings. Amen. To Decapolis, if you will. He was going to teach the word of God to the Gentiles. Because up until then, the Jews thought they had exclusive rights to the word of God. Not so. Jesus had came to teach and preach to the Gentiles. Amen. That, that uh, the salvation would belong not only to the Jews, but to the Gentiles as well. So verse 11 here, we see that there was, uh, now there was nigh unto them in the mountain a great herd of swine feeding. And all, look at this, verse 12 through 13 here says, And all the devils besought him, saying, Send us into the swine, that we may enter them. And forthwith Jesus gave them leave. Jesus had an understanding of what was going to happen before they knew. They wanted to go into the swine so they could hang around. They, they, all right, we'll give you this one man back, but we're going to find somebody else in this country to get off into. You see what I'm saying? Transfer of spirits. This was, this was the part that I wanted to point out to you. Look at how subtle the devil tried to manipulate this conversation. Don't, don't send us out of the country. Don't send us back to the pits of hell, but just send us over into those swine. The devil knew that the swine was considered unclean, and they were unclean. Okay? And so it would, Jesus would probably work with that. Oh yeah, he'll put us in these swine who, who are still in this field, and whatever Gentile come along next, we're going to get off into them, and we're going to torment them. It, it was just a transfer of spirit. But Jesus knew that he had to, con first of all, confront the spirit. I'm running low on time. Confront the spirit, and Jesus confronting the spirit, put him in the swine, and, and the swine, therefore, jumped off the cliff. Amen. And jumping off the cliff, they killed, they killed themselves, sending, leaving the demons, legions, nowhere to go but back to the pits of hell. Amen. Getting to the point here, if you look at verse 18 here, and, and when the ship had come into, and when he was coming to the ship, he that was possessed with the devil prayed that he might be with Jesus. He wanted to go with Jesus. Amen. And Jesus told him, look what Jesus told him. Uh, verse 19 here, how be it Jesus suffered him not, but said unto him, go home to thy friends and tell them how great things the Lord hath done for thee and hath compassion on thee. So what Jesus told this man that was de that had been dealing with the, the, the unclean spirit that Jesus delivered from to go home and share the good news that he was delivered by Jesus. This one time, look at what happened here. Jesus told him to go and share. Now, all prior to this, he was telling them, go and don't tell nobody what has happened. This time, he wanted him to go and share. Why? Because he knew this would draw people to the teaching and preaching of the gospel. And just like Jesus used this man, this man that was dealing with an unclean spirit. We, this man was locked up in tombs. We got brothers and sisters that's locked up right now in prison, in tombs. Amen. And they need to hear the word of God. Amen. We got brothers and sisters that in society right now, locked down by evil and unclean spirits, and they need to hear the word of God. Amen. And we who have experienced God's power to deliver us from unclean spirits, we have to go, amen, evangelistical point, we have to go and share the good news of the gospel with our brothers and sisters. May the Lord have a blessing to the reading and hearing of this Sunday school lesson this amen. morning. God bless you this morning. We thank God for this Sunday school lesson this morning. I pray this morning that each of you been blessed. And again, our, our, uh, our, our scripture this morning of reminders is, and he departed, amen, verse 20, he departed and began to publish in Decapolis how great things Jesus had done for him, and all the men did marvel. So him sharing 
a man sharing his testimony of what Jesus had done for him drew, drew men and women to Jesus. Let me share this with you. As we were praying this morning in the sanctuary, God dropped something in my spirit. And sometimes the person that really need to hear your testimony is you. I just, I'm going to leave that right there. I'm going to park the bus. Sometime, the person that needs to hear your testimony is you. Amen. God bless you this morning. Amen. We thank you for joining us this morning. If you have any questions or comments concerning Sunday school, we ask that you contact our Sunday school superintendent, who is in the person of Elder Otis Bryant. Amen. And he can be reached at Otis Bryant. That's O. D-I-S-E, Bryant, B-R-Y-A-N-T, at ImaniKojic.com, amen. And there you can, uh, you can relay your comments or questions that you have concerning Sunday school, amen. At this time, we want to remind you, amen, that the, the salvation is as easy as A-B-C, amen, except that Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior and personal Savior, amen. Believe, amen, be that he died on the cross and, on the th and was buried, and on the third day, he rose again. Amen. God the Father physically raised him from the dead. And then C, confess that you're a sinner and Jesus is Lord. Amen. And Jesus is able to save you. Amen. From a dying hell. Amen. He's able to forgive you of your sins, wash you of your sins. Amen. And make you whole again. In Jesus' name. Amen. We, uh, we pray this morning that if you know the word, if you know God's word, then Sunday school needs you. If you don't know God's words, then you need the Sunday school, amen. We pray that each and every one of you, amen, we, we pray that you find a Sunday school where the, pre the teaching of the word, the raw word of God is going on where you can grow, amen, and go further in the kingdom of Christ. At this time, we want to remind you, amen, to stay with us, amen, go over to ImaniKojic.com, amen, where there is a praise in the building, amen, let us enter into our morning worship together, giving God all the glory, all the praise. Now, God, we pray that you bless all those, oh God, that are here now, oh God, oh God, move upon their families, oh God, Lord, we pray that your spirit cover them and protect them from all the demonic activity that's happening in the world. The blood of Jesus this morning cover our families, our communities, and our friends. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. God bless you.